We're live. Good morning, afternoon, wherever it is, wherever you're at. So, hey guys, Mark here. Uh, cool day, Monday, as usual, bitter, cold, brutal. And, uh, but you know, that's life in the Northeast. Today, we're talking to Joe Anderson, Mr. Tat Gun Joe. Uh, I can't stand the word tat gun, but uh, I love Joe. So, you know, that's just, you know, sometimes you got to suck it up a little bit. Uh, Joe is an outstanding tattooer, a graffiti artist, muralist, uh, uh, painter, uh, all around great guy. Uh, I've known him for a few years, been using Needle Jig for a while. Uh, uh, we get together occasionally at shows, have some fun. And uh, if you don't know Joe, I'd like to introduce you to him and, uh, you know, uh, get to know the guy a little bit. So this is Joe. Joe, say hi, man. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Joe's a man of many words. Uh, yeah. Pretty quiet guy, all in all, but uh, your, your, your art speaks volumes, uh, to say the least, man. It's bold. It's vivid. Uh, you know, the, the, the caricature aspects of it. Uh, uh, your art jumps out at people. So where'd you get started in art, man? Was it, uh, you know, obviously as a kid or whatever, but what was your first major medium? Um, I used to do like a lot of pen and ink. Like when I was really young, like drawing with pens on paper, I loved that. Um, and I've been drawing forever. Since I can remember. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't have, you know, it was a different day, so we didn't have all the electronics and stuff. So playing outside a lot and drawing a ton. Mm -hmm. It's all about. When did you, okay, so pen on paper uh, is, is, is one thing. I mean, that's more of an illustrative style or stuff, but when did you get into, uh, you know, the bold color renderings and things like that? I mean. So um, before tattooing, I did airbrush. Mm -hmm. So I used to do t-shirts and stuff like that, you know, um, which is fun, it was interesting. Um, and that was all just like high contrast, bright color, you know, in your face stuff. Um, so I think a little bit of that, you know, maybe come from that. Um, and then obviously with tattooing, um, you want to go for bold, high contrast work, just especially um, being more into color, you know, I think you got to kind of push things down. Uh, it, is uh, anybody else, uh, you're breaking up to me just a little bit, Joe, there. Uh, Gabe, uh, is, is he clear or what? Um, what are you hearing, Gabe? Yeah, it's breaking up a little bit. You might want to uh, just redo the uh, the answer to that one. Okay, all right. So go back um, to the, the the airbrushing, man. How'd you get your start? Were you airbrushing t-shirts on a on a on a like a fishing wharf or something like that, or, or what, what were you doing with the airbrush? So I used to go uh, with these couple of guys. It was called uh, CC Airbrush, um, and we used to go just travel around different events. A lot of like kids sporting events. Um, you do t-shirts, hats, uh, and then, you know, every now and then helmets. Um, I did do a lot of sneakers. Too. I got to do that. Um, and then we actually set up a kiosk at the uh, Fox River Mall in Appleton. Um, and I was like the main dude there. So I did a ton of stuff there. So you basically uh, tended to soccer moms. That's for the most part, man. Like, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. So that explains your, your uh, uh, the, 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 the female rendering aspects, man. A lot of cougars <laughs> in your world in the, in the early stage of life. That explains some things right there. For sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start tattooing, Joe? Um, I started my apprenticeship in 2010. Um, I think I did my first tattoo in 2011, like as an apprentice. Okay. Um, where did you apprentice at? At Colts Timeless Tattoos. Oh man, really? Yeah. Awesome. That's cool. That's cool. I did not know that, man. That's that, that's that's an interesting tidbit. So yeah, it's kind of funny because he's like a black and gray guy, and I'm like super colored. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I've known you for years, but I guess uh, you know we all know each other to some degree for sure. But I guess I didn't. I had no idea that he played that big a role in uh in your beginning that is awesome yeah airbrushing is actually how i met those guys because they had the shop at that mall mm -hmm. um and i became friends with them and then they you know cole kind of convinced me to 
to start apprenticing, um, you know, and, and learning the, the tattoo stuff. And he actually introduced me to a lot of new school guys early on, like you know, obviously like Jesse Smith, which was pivotal uh, for me having an interest in tattooing because for me at that point, all I knew of it was, you know, kind of like shaky traditional, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I didn't just really know sailors and, you know, military yeah. and bikers, right? <laughs> yeah, I had no idea that there was like this whole other world because I well, hadn't been introduced to it. Oh, I think that world was still relatively recent back then, too. I was like, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, art wasn't even art now is a huge pivotal or a huge portion of what we do these days. But when I even started, even like back in like 92 and whatnot, uh, you know, the, the artistic part was still smaller, you know, it was still more, you know, street shop flash, all that other, you know, fun stuff, you know, military uh, uh, bikers and all that. And, and over the years, the tables have turned on that, you know, that's be the art, the real artists have become, and not to say that the artists of days gone by are not real artists, but to the people that brought true artistic qualities into tattooing and, and, and art as it's known in the museum world into tattooing is, is, is still relatively recent. So, I mean, that, that was, that was maybe a 50, 50 split about then. Now it's all art. It's hard to find the, uh, the, the, I don't want to say less desirable shops, but the, the you know, the, the traditional shops, they don't exist that much anymore. Almost all shops are custom. The, the high, definite majority, I think. What do you think? Yeah, there's, there's also definitely a lot more private studios. Mm -hmm. You know, where with social media, you, you as an individual artist have such a strong following that you don't necessarily depend on a shop with a reputation um, their advertising campaign, whatever they're doing, you know, you can really be a lot more independent these days. So I think that's kind of changed, um, changed that quite a lot. Um, well, that's a huge and I think, pro and con for some people. It just depends on their ambition and skill set. Yeah. I think for me, I like working at a shop because I like to do art. I don't want to have to take on too much responsibility. I don't really like the overwhelmingness of all these different social medias and taking care of all these things. I feel like I'm always neglecting something. So working at a shop is nice for me because it frees that time up and I can just focus on my art. Try to draw and paint more. Learn. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know a lot of guys that leave shops and they go to the private studios and I'm like, man, I'm like, I don't think I, would ever want to do that. It's uh, the camaraderie in a shop is awesome. Uh, to be able to feed off of other people's uh, artistic input and the, the, the critique and, and all that back and forth. I mean, that, that to me is everything, you know, when, when you get stuck in a private studio by yourself, I know people do it and they do it very well, but to me, limiting your exposure to other artists is uh, counterproductive so oh for sure um not one of us can say we would be rap without the help of others you know mm -hmm. um and and they, they all play a pivotal role whether it's been good or bad whatever the relationships were um everybody has something to teach you and you can learn anything from anyone um, mm -hmm. so distancing yourself from that i don't think is really good uh for anybody's career as far as okay so okay so we got you uh starting out with airbrushing moving into tattooing uh where along the timeline did you get into like the large-scale murals graffiti and things like that um well i always had an interest in graffiti growing up it was a huge 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 uh influence in my style and ideas and, and things like that um but i kind of didn't really do much of it during tattooing. I kind of just committed everything to tattooing. Um, and then the last couple of years, you know, I was like, man, I want to get back into this. And I, I love spray painting. You know, it's fun. It's fun to do things big. 
and it's it's super efficient like that's what i really love about it um so i started getting back into it uh did a few pieces i built a practice wall at my house um just kept layering up over that thing a bunch and then this uh this last year 2020 um tattooing being shut down and not really tattooing much when i could again and everything that transpired it freed up a lot of time for me and i met up with somebody that i had been following online uh an artist uh, named salt rock um i met up with him and and then we started kind of painting together and that pushed me to like paint more um in monona which is like a little town kind of outside of madison but, uh they actually had this there's this place called momentum art tech and they pushed a lot to have uh businesses allow artists to come shows on the buildings so me and salt were like well you know let's just eat this up and just just you know wreck this area and just do as many walls as we can as big as we can whatever uh so we spent the the later half of the summer just just paint man like i just tagging everything heroes. you could yeah, we just went, you know, it, it, it's all legal stuff. I don't, I don't do the illegal stuff. I'm too old to be running and ducking. But uh, none of us do any illegal stuff, Joe. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we did a lot of stuff, and it was cool, man. You know, we got to do a few things that, like, like I did this. We did this one mural, uh, a Native American one. I did a portrait. I think it's Sitting Bull, and he did the the lettering that says, uh, "We are still here," mm -hmm. and so. That was a good one, you know. That one had some some meaning and a message behind it. Uh, so that was impactful, you know, and, and stuff like that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, now we're looking at that piece right now. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I love that font. I love the lettering, man. That's that's. that's yeah, great. Salt did that. He crushed his lettering, man. Stuff wow. like edgy, like grimy. He's a good dude. Nice. Nice, man. So, and I was like, one of the things I was like, I remember we talked to, uh, you know, a little bit early on when uh, this whole uh, pandemic thing was first, first starting and, and, you know, nobody, nobody knows what, nobody knew what was going on and nobody still knows what's going on realistically, but uh, oh, it's insane, man. But like, uh, you know, I mean, what I'm curious about is, is how this has affected you. Obviously you just said, you know, you got more back into your large scale art and, you know, to get back to roots and, 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 you know, fine tune those skills and whatnot. But like, I think a lot of us have had to be a little more creative as to, uh, you know, how we're putting food on the table, what we're doing, things like that or whatever. So, what, you know, without prying too personally, but like, you know, maybe you can help out some other artists by giving other people ideas as to what you've done during this time that's, uh, you know, enabled you to uh, just keep moving forward. Okay, so a uh, couple things that happened that kind of like changed my situation a lot. Um, initially, Wisconsin said no tattooing, and we we contact our landlord to communicate with her about that. And she wasn't having it; like she wasn't willing to work with us on rent. So we were kind of put in a financial position. We're like we're not really sure what we're gonna do and, and figure this out. But luckily, she had a a tenant that wanted a bigger place. So they came and looked at the place. They liked it. They took over the lease. So that I was able to leave that lease. But in doing so, we had to move up north back to my hometown, Wisconsin Rapids, a very small town. Um, the benefit of that is the cost of living here is next to nothing. I'm paying maybe a third to live right. as what I was in Madison. Um, and then to sort of balance, like, making money, not tattooing, um, I do a lot of online auctions on my Instagram and sometimes Facebook. So I'll just take an old painting of mine that's just kind of been laying around, which most of them do just lay around. Uh, and I'll just post it and I'll say, hey, you know, auction way, comment with your price. And whoever has the highest bid at this time, they get the painting. Cool. Um, I'll do that because I, I'm pretty prolific about painting a lot. So I have a lot of paintings I can do that, but then I don't get too emotionally attached to them. Um, so I'll do that. And that gets me extra money. I don't always get as much money as I would like to get off of a painting, but it's cool because I get a little bit extra cash. 
um, my paintings hanging up at somebody's place or at a shop or, or whatever. And then it motivates me to paint something. So it's, well, yeah. it's, and you're just on to the next. I mean, it's, it just becomes cyclical, uh, which is awesome. So for those that are interested, it is Tat Gun Joe uh, is his uh, Instagram. If you want to follow along or buy yourself some cool art to hang on your wall, definitely encourage you to do that. I've been kind of bugging Joe to do a painting for me, man. But, you know, I'm just, oh, I'm yeah. busy. he's a busy guy. He's a busy guy. But <laughs> Damn, that's all right. We'll, that we'll get thing, it yeah. done, man. We'll get it done. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, go support Joe and, and support other artists. You know, uh, do what you can to help out those that are affected by this, uh, well, this situation we're all in. But it's, it's I mean, it's, it's cool that you were able to adapt and, and, and make it work. It obviously sucks balls that you had to, you know, lose a shop. And, but I'm also the kind of guy where like, okay, you know, I mean, it happened for a reason and, uh, and uh, you'll be back in full force again in no time, you know, before you know it, we'll all do what we can to help you get there uh, for sure. But, but this last year has been like, big, big, big time for reflection on my part as to uh, what I am doing with my time, what I feel I should be doing with my time and, you know, and what I want to do with my time. Those, those things are generally always conflicting uh, to have, sounds weird, but to have a couple of those options taken away. Uh, yeah, I bitched about it, but at the same time, it, 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 it forces me to focus on some other stuff, which is, you know, making the best of a shitty situation. Yes. But at the same time, it's like, if not, I would have kept going down the same path and just doing the same things and, you know, and, and maybe not necessarily making advancements within myself and my business and, and what I do. So uh, you found the silver lining, Joe. That's awesome, man. I mean, uh, uh how are the how's the rules up there right now? Is it still no tattooing or is it limited? Oh, uh, there's tattooing. The only uh, real stipulation they have on us is, and I guess it kind of depends on where you're at, but um, you just have to wear a mask. That's pretty much it. Um, my sanitation process or you know the septic technique and stuff like that hasn't changed much. Um, I'm a little bit more, you know, I'll clean a little bit more often now, top downs and stuff like that. Uh, that's really the only change that's happened. Is, uh, okay, so it's more of an inconvenience than a, than a restriction at this point. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, enough about the personal drama and all that fun stuff. Uh, get back to art a little bit here. Uh, at what point did you, I mean, we see a lot of your, your digital art and stuff like that. Like at what point did you make the, uh, make that transition from, from traditional mediums into the digital art form, say using procreate. And I mean, to me, I've dabbled in procreate and like, I can draw stick figures with it probably uh, because I haven't spent enough time practicing, but like you've gotten pretty good at it. Uh, when did you make that transition? And what do you, what do you enjoy about that medium now? Well, Let's see. I so the digital stuff I've always kind of embraced for a long time. I I've always done all my own, you know, graphic design and things like that on computer. So I was pretty comfortable with that transition there. Um, and in high school, I did a ton of art classes, digital stuff, a few of them. Um, so so that I never really had a problem with that. Uh, and I got the first iPad. I'm not even sure what year that came out, but <laughs> I think I had, I had a Samsung uh, Galaxy Note little, uh, little tablet with a stylus that was inside of it. It was tight. And I think that was when I was at Studio 13. So it must have been like six years ago, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Five or six, I think. Um, and I started, you know, getting used to that. Uh, it took a long time to get comfortable though, because not having that texture and that pressure control like you do with a pencil on paper. Um, it took a long time to kind of get comfortable with that. And then once the iPad came out and I got that, I got the textured screen protector on it, which helped me be a lot more comfortable. And 
I just kept drawing, man. You know, like I, I, I used to really just try to always make sure that I was out drawing everybody. Mm-hmm. Not like, not like that much of an asshole about it, but like, just, I wanted to make sure that like, if I'm going to be around people and I'm going to be on their level, I need to be producing enough to say that I belong here. Right. So I always just try to make sure I was banging out drawings, so drawing, drawing. And that really helped me get better at, um, being just used to drawing on a tablet and then also figuring things out that worked and, and made me work faster. Mm-hmm. And over the years, I've just gotten more comfortable and developed my own kind of approach. Like I have videos out there where I kind of show what I do a little bit without explaining it too much. But, um, you know, what I love about it is I can tone my paper down. I can just drop a layer of brown, make it transparent. I sketch underneath it. It's toned out so it doesn't hurt my eyes as much. Um, which makes it, you know, you can more comfortably see the screen for a longer period of time. Uh, you can get your whole your whole value set figured out right off that tone paper because you just sketch it and then you refine it and then you do your highlights over the top. You've got that down and then you can just very seamlessly build on top of that with colors, figure out your color study. It just gets you so prepared for a tattoo where when you sit down to do your, your tattoo or whatever, you're not having to think of like, where does this go? What's going here? What color is this? You know what's going on. You did it, you know, and you can do a color study in 30 seconds with the iPad. Like, I don't know why anybody wouldn't use it at this point. Um, who's trying to do custom work anyways, or more like, you know, like stronger color theory and stuff like that. It helps you a ton with like the academic art aspect. Well, I look at a lot of the stuff you're doing and to me, it looks, it reminds me of, uh, okay, so I started tattooing, you know, in the 90s in in what we had for a quick medium around the shop then was just uh, Prismacolors, you know, pencils, you know, pencils on paper. And I look at a lot of your Procreate art and it looks to me like you're, you're drawing with colored pencils on paper. So there's a, there's a major, uh, a real familiarity to your art, to what I used to do, except for you do it in minutes now where it would, you know, take me, you know, half a day to, to produce a nice piece like that. So it's, it's, that's actually, that's actually something that kind of took a while because initially stuff would be too digital. Like I would paint it too perfect, too clean. And it just, it just looked synthetic. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while to to like kind of let that go and just be loose with it. You know, I started, I do a lot more of my sketches with like the, um, I think it's called peppermint pencil uh, and the 6B pencil. Excuse okay. me, I'm choking, uh, <laughs> choking on my coffee. <laughs> oh, sorry. You're good. Um, and <clears throat> I just like that speed, you know, and, and, and keeping it loose and, and, and it's okay for it to look like a sketch. Once I got kind of comfortable with that, I, I feel like I, I pushed push what I could do on my iPad a little bit further. So now you said you do some, uh, some short videos or whatever, where you're showing people your style on how you do this. Uh, uh, where, where can people check those out? Is that on your Instagram or do you have another page? On my Instagram every now and then, um, cause with procreate, you can do a time-lapse replay. Um, and it just basically just plays what happened through the, the drawing, you can do it like for a fraction of the time or you can do it for 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of it. I haven't posted one of those in a while, but I used to have a lot of people asking me about the drawing process and, and, and things like that. And it's hard to, you know, maintain your career, keep track of everything, take care of a family and get back to every single person about every question. So I tried to post stuff to help those people out who might have had questions. Nice. Well, uh, Gabe's scrolling through your Instagram here or whatever, and uh, and I'm thinking you need to post more cat pictures too, because uh, <laughs> you know everybody needs everybody needs cat pictures in their life. So, so yeah, all in all, cat, man, uh... all in all, things are doing good for you these days. Or, or I mean, how often are you tattooing? Are you re- are you available to tattoo if people want to hit you up? Um, you know, do you have a, a big wait list, or where where are you at on that? these days so i'm still tattooing um i'm just 
being very selective about what I will do nowadays. Um, I'm really only tattooing a couple times a week. Uh, you know, being asthmatic, I am high risk. So there is a little extra cause for concern mm -hmm. uh, with having to do it to, to make money. Um, so I'm a little hesitant, you know, to just kind of like, I'm not doing multiple tattoos a day. That's for sure. I'm definitely only doing one a day. Um, I'm not traveling as much. Um, I take a winter break kind of from traveling anyways, because I snowboard. Uh, time to do it. So uh, once it starts warming up, I'll start, you know, traveling around a little bit more again, um, mm -hmm. kind of selectively and cautiously. I have like a little bit of an off topic question, of course, here, because yeah. uh, you said snowboarding or whatever. I mean, I, 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 I live in the mountains and, uh, and uh, with the whole pandemic thing or whatever, I mean, obviously you're outdoors, you're relatively social distance stuff, I guess. How is that working out for you? I mean, like, like, cause I even thought about skiing again this year. I haven't skied in 30 yeah. years uh, just for something to do. Uh, but uh, I mean, do you feel safe out there or whatever, or are there crazy restrictions on that too? It has nothing to do with tattooing. Um, I'm just curious. Oh yeah, no, that's cool. Uh, no, I feel fine out there. Um, you know, you're geared up, you're already wearing face mask anyways, you know, um, you got goggles on too. If anything, you're probably more protected, uh, than mm -hmm. you are at a grocery store, you know, but, uh, you know, the only thing is that they're just trying to make sure when people are in the line, they're wearing their masks while they're down there to get on the lift mm -hmm. um, and trying to social distance while you're in line waiting. So they're controlling that a little bit more, uh, which is slowing it down a little bit on the busy days, but it's okay. It's worth it. Um, it kind of depends on the place though. I travel around to different, different spots and snowboard you know, trying to chase the powder and stuff. Uh, some places they have a limited amount of tickets to sell in a day. Some places are doing a lottery system. Some places like season pass holders get priority. Um, all, everybody's kind of having their own rules about that. So you've got mm -hmm. kind of just want to get on and you've got probably at least three ski hills in your area that you can go to for an hour. You just want to see who's got what kind of stipulation. To try yeah. to follow that. I just, I, I'm curious. I like to, I, well, I can't say I like, I, 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 I like to observe and see how other people are, are handling the situation, how other businesses are, uh, are, are working, you know, what, uh, what restrictions they're imposing and, and whether they're enforcing them. That's, that's the whole thing. Like you can have all of these written rules and protocols and stuff like that, but who's really enforcing them and stuff like this. You see people walking, you know, through Home Depot or, or Walmart with their mask over their mouth and their, their nose hanging out four inches, you know, and it's just, uh, that's, that's you. No, they just, they're always touching oh. the mask and then they're touching other stuff and it's just cross-contamination, you know? I mean, uh, unfortunately, a lot of tattooers I know don't understand cross-contamination well enough. I can't expect the general public to to, to, right. to remotely grasp that topic, but like, but just the, the, the idiocracy I see out there constantly, but I mean, I just... I'm curious as to seeing how other businesses handle it. Uh, you know, I've most businesses I go into don't say anything to anybody. It's, 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 it's luckily where I'm at. Majority of the people are pretty respectful, but there's always those few. And it doesn't seem like those people get addressed. You just got to head two aisles over and avoid them. And, uh, and that's that. So. Yeah. I uh, think as far as the ski hills are concerned, everybody's been, uh, seems to be like on board with whatever, like some places, you have to be like, I was just up in Michigan, um, kind of like right by Lake Superior, uh, mountains. And, uh, in Michigan, you can't eat inside. So I got my kid a burger or whatever. We just had to go outside. You no, know, not a big deal. That was kind of different because in Wisconsin, you can still, at the ski resorts even, you can still eat inside. They just have limited seating. You know, so the rules kind of change, you know, wherever mm -hmm. you're at. But for the most part, everybody I've been seeing at those places is kind of following along. I See, I'm not eating inside anywhere. I just, we, me and my wife, we usually go out for date night. I mean, we haven't had a date night, you know, yeah, you in a restaurant like a week, in a right? year. What's up? You guys used to do that like once a week. I thought. Yeah. Right? You know, at least once a week, we go out and have dinner, you know, at our favorite restaurant. And, and we haven't done that in, in a year, really. 
And uh, now we, we, we get food to go from there. And, you know, we get, we, we support our restaurants that we enjoy by getting takeout and things like that. But I mean, yeah, I just don't, I just don't even want to go there for now. You know, I mean, it's all a reasonable portion of the world is vaccinated and they have some better treatments. I'm not, I, there's no need. I, I, I miss it, but I'm also like, it's not that big a deal to me. You know, I, I like being home. I'm okay with that. Yeah. If I can get my favorite food at home, you know, and I can, I can eat my favorite food, maybe sitting in my pajamas, then that's, you know, that's a win-win for me. And the beer's <laughs> cheaper at home than it is at the restaurant. Yeah. So what the hell? So I don't know. That's just, just my perspective. And in, in Massachusetts, I want to say if we even leave the state or go somewhere, when we come back, we got to, supposedly self-quarantine for a certain number of days and all snap blah, blah, blah. I don't even want to leave my state. I just say, you know, I want to go see you all, but I don't want to deal with the, uh, the implications of crossing like, you know, eight state lines to get where I'm going and then dealing with all everybody's, you know, hysteria along the way. It's just not, it's not worth it to me, man. I can wait. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So I don't think, but you know, We'll just uh, we'll just postpone things for a little longer, I guess. But you're bouncing around from state to state, and you're comfortable with that. I mean, obviously, I'm not going. That, but... I'm not going too far, uh, you know, out of my area or whatever. But uh, I'm, you know, with that, if I'm going to such rural areas. There's nothing. I'm right. not in contact with anybody. Yeah. So, just so you know, as a guy that lives in one of those rural areas. Um, we frown upon the motherfuckers coming in from out of state and bringing their, their virus sick in the asses with us. Cause uh, I mean, uh, it, I, it's in jest, but it's, it's, we live in an area where there's a lot of uh, people come up from, uh, you know, uh, the heavily populated areas, New York city, they have resort homes up here. They have timeshares up here. They have everything. So, so when, uh, when it strikes hard down there in those Metro areas, they come running up here. I'm like, man, why? stay where you're at. Leave us alone, man. We're safe, you know? So, and, and, and not in a judgmental fashion, but I'm like, man, if ever, my philosophy is if everybody would just sit still for an extended period of time, we'd be in a better position. So, but not that I'm judging you or, or others for living their lives because I can't say I'm right. You know, I mean, I, 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 I can be wrong, you know, it, it may be, have to be, we may all have to get it and do the herd immunity thing. I don't know. I mean, you can argue, argue either side of that coin. Um, but I err on the side of caution, I guess. So, but that's just, that's just me. So I like to hear other people are proceeding with their lives and, and, and handling the situation. So. Yeah. I think with, with the snowboarding thing, it's a little bit different. You're outside, not, you know, in a crowded area, it's not, mm-hmm. you no. Know, you're super distant from people. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with that than I am. I feel better doing that than I do. Yeah. And I'm not judging you, I mean, Joe, at all. I'm not yeah, judging you, yeah, no. man. I love you, brother. Yeah. But uh, but I, 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 it's it's truly a curiosity. It's, a, it's that's all. And I and I totally understand the outdoors thing. And I totally, I mean, and, and yeah, you know, I mean, you're not, you're not boarding within like, you know, a couple of feet of somebody else. It, it makes total sense, but. I just, I just like to see how other people handle it. And I want other people's perspectives because the more information I get from others, I can kind of fine tune my own thought process and philosophies on the whole thing. Cause you know, I, I think I'm a fairly intelligent guy, but I, I certainly don't know everything, man. That's just, it would be foolish to think I did. So, but so, okay. Way, way off topic of art and tattooing or whatever. So, um, I, when do you think you'd be comfortable getting back out on the, uh, the touring circuit and, uh, and tattooing in a convention style environment again? I mean, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of just waiting to see how they handle it. Too, um, because, you know, I don't know what the stipulations are going to be, how things are going to change and how that's going to affect how we can, handle our business and, you know is it going to affect the profitability of it you know uh, i just don't know so there's so much uncertainty with it that mm-hmm. i'm not even really concerning myself 
uh, with it. I'm just basically kind of approaching things like day by day. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, it's going to change. We know that. Uh, as to what's going to change, we don't know that. You know, I, I think we're going to see people wearing masks while tattooing pretty much everywhere. I mean, I and even even if even if they found a cure for this tomorrow, which they won't. This, I think this is with us forever and a day. It's going to be like any other virus. It's, it's just going to be there. Uh, hopefully we have good treatment for it. But I mean, uh, I just think uh, people are becoming more conscious as to their decisions and how they affect others. So I think we're going to be seeing masks during tattooing, you know, quite prevalently uh, for quite a while. Um, I've never been a huge fan of getting tattooed at a show just because, I mean, it's as a guy that's been doing it for decades and we do the best with what we can with what we have in those circumstances and it's safe, but it's, is it as safe as being in a private studio? No, it's never going to be as safe as being in a private studio, but, uh, uh, but so the, that's going to change. Will the booths get bigger? Will we have more space? Will there be, what other limitations will be imposed? Um, profitability, I'm not worried about uh, because it's like any other business in the world. Whatever costs the, the, the vendor incurs, essentially you're going to get passed on to the consumer. I mean, you know, if, you're, if your booth costs you a little bit more or you have to buy a couple extra materials, your costs go up. It's just, so therefore the, the tattoo cost goes up. So... I think that's all stuff that's going to naturally adjust. Um, I mean, my personally, I'll consider traveling again when maybe half the population is vaccinated. I think that's, that's, that's a point when I'll start to think about it, you know, but, but my thoughts may change between here and then too. So, but I need to see some forward progress in the, in the, the combating of this to, uh, to move forward in that direction again so yeah i'm kind of the same boat I'm okay just gonna wait it out see what happens yeah i got other friends yeah. that are just like man if there's a show tomorrow i'm going and i'm like cool i i'm not gonna judge you for that either you know it's like it's like it's it's kind of your you know do you you know you do you and and, and whatnot and uh sure you jump in the deep end and tell me if i can swim there or not you know and i'll you know i mean not to let my friends play guinea pig but uh, that's kind of what i'm gonna do for a little bit you know i i uh as you get older you you everything heals slower so you know you, yeah. you twist your ankle it takes months and months to heal or you know when you're in your 20s you sprain sprain your ankle and you're you know you're 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 back out running that weekend it's uh different world now so be a little more cautious in my older older age i've slowed down a little bit on most stuff but like even snowboarding now it's like like i wiped out the other day because i was just fucking too hard and hit a rock and like it popped off of it it wasn't ready and i fell and like my arm got pulled up and like my, my arm still sore from something that like a few years ago i have been fine I just off. I don't know. so gotta relax a little bit Play it safe. So, so you got anything in the works? Anything upcoming? Any, any, any new art you, uh, you, you, you going to be presenting to the world or, or for sale or whatever? Plug some stuff, man. Um, yeah, I've got some paintings behind me that are mine. This Lego guy, this creepy little Lego guy, and then this alien. Um, this is something me and my daughter are doing. It's a monkey. We just were done. Um, so I got some stuff in the works. I'm always like kind of dabbling on multiple pieces, but, uh, you know, with the recent passing of Gary, uh, I've been kind of thinking about you know, maybe trying to do uh, a piece for him or something, um, you know, maybe I can auction off to give a something like that. You know? um, That's sad, man. There's a lot yeah. of people been going away lately. And uh, I, I, I'd be honest with you, my wife had a rough weekend. Uh, she just, just this weekend, within like four or five days, two childhood friends of hers passed. And it's just, just like, it's just, uh, just, you grow numb to it after a while. It's, yeah. it's, it's been relentless. So I, I, I my condolences, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss for sure. 
uh, it's just strange damn time. So you 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 want to do something like memorial, or are we gonna do? Something? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of something like. I don't know. I can do where I mix. I take. I you know, kind of like uh, pay homage to his style. He had a you know, such a strong, identifiable uh, approach and style to his art. Um, so I've been, been kind of thinking about maybe like kind of emulate that, pay homage to that, um, and mix it up with. Uh, so I've been, you know, playing with that in my mind. Um, you know, that's that's kind of been something I've been thinking about the last couple of days. Um, and then right now I'm just trying to figure out some printer issues so I can start uh, producing. I want to produce large scale prints like this size, like 24 by 36. Everybody does nine by 12, the beans. I want to do bigger, more powerful art prints. So I got a printer, I'm just trying to fine tune the, uh, the ink setup and stuff. It's, it's kind of a headache, uh, but you know, work on that. Every now and then, just to try to get some prints pumped out. I'm going to revamp my website soon. Try to push more of the online art aspect of it. Um, especially since tattooing is kind of it's no weird place right now. You're breaking up a little bit more here again. Um, now it's just, so you just, might just you... try getting uh, closer to the microphone if possible. That might be the Yeah, right. I'll scoot in. All right. So tell us about this new printer again. So, so you're gonna you're working on some large scale stuff. Yeah, I got a big printer, so I can do 24 by 36 prints. I think I can actually do 24 by like, 90. but I want to do larger scale prints and start pushing online hmm. art market like that a little bit more, um, just to kind of try to adjust for tattooing slowing down for me. Mm -hmm. um, but you're doing this all in house. You're, you're bringing the full production in house here. So, you know, you get this thing running nice. Who knows? You might be able to uh, print stuff for other people. It might be a few extra bucks there, too. So, yep. Yeah. I've, I've done a few prints for people in the past. Uh, it's just something you got to, it's a different learning curve, you know, um, paper issues, ink issues, and computer communication, uh, troubleshooting, and and all kinds of things you got to just adjust to and learn, um, which is good. It, I, I like learning, man. I'm a super nerd. So mm -hmm. whenever I have an opportunity to learn new stuff, try new things, go through, you know, new struggles, uh, you know, and you, you, you accomplish those goals and yep. come out a lot stronger. I love that. Yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. No, just, just, just this morning, I get a big old box arrived from the, the, the Netherlands. It's uh, upgrade kit for my my 3d printer my dual extruder 3d printer uh so they, they they got a new upgrade for it so i like just jumped right on so as soon as i get off the the horn here with you i'm gonna go over there and and dismantle my printer and and uh, yeah. put a bunch of new parts in and learn some new firmware software upgrades all that and and and, uh, and uh have some hopefully have a little fun with that so uh work yeah that's some fun types and stuff yeah I, I like you said learning something new um and i need to know how it works that's why i like to build my own and stuff like that too because it's i hate when something's not working and i have to rely on somebody else call a technician or something and 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 wait i don't like waiting i'm not a patient person yeah. so this way here seeing how i built the whole printer from the ground up something goes wrong i can usually get in there myself figure it out and move forward so yeah i, I would love to get a 3d printer i've thought about like taking my art into like a 3d uh molding program mm -hmm. you know making it more realistic or whatever and then 3d printing it like that's something that i would eventually really 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 love to get into um i think especially because the stuff i draw i try to think of it three-dimensionally mm -hmm. you know um i think that plays a big role in how i approach the drawing and coloring and stuff and light sources um so for me that'd be super fun to actually make in 3d well, I'm I'm no genius in that area, but I, I definitely have some experience and some other friends that are uh, pretty damn good at it. So that I that I rely on when I need a little help here and there. So uh, hit me up if you need a little information or whatever. But I would say you get a couple of cheap printers uh, to start with. Um, I want to say uh, Creality makes one called the uh, the Ender Three version two. 
about 250 bucks for a decent filament printer. Uh, not going to be production quality, but I mean, to get familiar with it, you can, you can make some cool stuff and really get familiar with it. Find out if you like it. If you like it, then you, then you jump in the deep end of the pool and you spend a few thousand dollars getting a nice production quality printer. But, uh, you know, you, you don't want to spend that kind of money and then find out you, uh, you know, you're not as fond of it as you thought you were. Right. Uh, and same thing with the resin printers. I bought a relatively inexpensive resin printer, which is, uh, the coolest thing starts with a bath of epoxy really or plastic resin and then and then uh uh uv rays cures it, it's just cool stuff but uh but i bought a cheap one a 300 hundred yeah. dollar one to play play in that sandbox for a little bit too and then uh if i like what it's doing or if i have a real use for it within the business i'll i'll get a nicer one but uh yeah i just i like to tinker man i'm a i'm a i'm a prototyper inventor so it, it works for me but i'll help you in any way i can with that or if i can get, yeah if i can't it. help you i will uh i will get you in touch with some people that then definitely can help you so but, yeah i'll let you know once i start uh start getting into it but like i said it's definitely i have a strong interest in it seeing cool. my stuff in you know 3d and being able to actually like hold it and you know whatever be for you if you if you if you make some small 3D models or stuff like that too, and you want to see what they look like through printed 3D printed, you know, uh, uh, we'll get together offline and send me the files and yeah, for sure. uh, print you out a little piece, and you can see kind of have somewhat of an expectation as to to you know what the limitations are. So yeah. really, the limitations are based on the amount of money you want to spend. I mean, there are there are like million dollar 3D printers out there. It's insane. Yeah. But I mean, That's you don't need great. to go that far, yeah. But realistically, production quality, you could probably expect to spend five grand on a really nice 3D printer where you can feel comfortable selling the products coming off of it, you know. You might be able to get away with a two, three thousand dollar printer, but you know, you're gonna have to do more legwork on that. But that, that's yeah, a whole whole different yeah, yeah. You know, you have to you're gonna do more work in the the fine tuning and the details and and the machine, yeah, you're going to do more of the work with than the machine uh, and the and the software. So, you know, that's what you're paying for is the the artificial intelligence and the and the capabilities yeah. of the the machines and stuff. But cool, man. Uh, I'm glad you're doing well. Uh, you know, uh, sorry you had to let the shop go. Certainly sorry uh, for your loss. And but uh, your artwork is killing it, man. It's uh, you. you know you're you're producing large, cool, colorful stuff. And uh, I encourage anybody out there to support you by, you know, getting some of your prints or, or stepping up and getting on some of these, uh, these, uh, these painting auctions. I know uh, I haven't been looking at them as much because I'm buried in my new projects and endeavors and whatnot, but uh, I still want to talk to you about doing that painting for me. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We, we need uh, to get, we need to move forward on that. But Yeah. Cool, man. Like, you got any uh, anybody you want to say hi to, or any uh, anything else you want to plug before we let this go? Or, oh man, uh, I don't know. I, I guess you know the main thing would be um, shout out to Gears family. Uh, sorry for the loss that they, they had to go through. Uh, he was an amazing dude. Uh, one of the best guys I've ever met. One of the best in tattooing. Uh, all around great, positive dude. Uh, he more like. To do the inspiration to everybody. Um, so, condolences to the, the family. Uh, as far as tattooing is concerned, um, man, I don't even know. Uh, maybe if Kane's watching this, uh, Big Teddy Kane, what's up? I'll plug you quick. Uh, and of course, anybody I look up to, uh, you know, I, I appreciate everybody sharing everything they do. Um, you know, I don't always say it or talk to everybody. I, I, I don't talk a lot i'm pretty short short worded most of the time but uh everybody inspires me to, to continue push greatness and be the best version of myself so i appreciate all the kind words and you know, all the clients who are uh, still interested in getting tattooed and supporting me and everybody who's bought my art over this last year you know, get to, uh, probably one of the, the most financial things I've ever seen. So i appreciate and love everybody for the support 
Right on, man. Right on. We love you too. And uh, now here's the point where I got to ask you to tell people to uh, like, share, subscribe to the videos or whatever, because, well, that's how we, uh, we're going to make this channel a little bit bigger and a little more informative for people. So go away. Yeah. Go so plug me, man. Plug me, motherfucker. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, I take needle jig in every single tattoo <laughs> post I do. Uh, I, they're really, really, really good quality needle, uh, needles, uh, good grips too. And I love them. Uh, I've been fucking with needle jig for a long time now, probably six years, five years. Um, and one of the things that like immediately you know, attracted me to needle jig was the ability to actually talk to Mark in person, get his feedback and get information about the product, give him, uh, and you know, he was very open and willing to listen to input from you, which was kind of a first, uh, I think for me, in the industry. I liked that, um, you know, that closed quarter uh, communication uh, made me super comfortable. So I started using the product a lot more. And then a few, later, a few years later, they uh, Mark hit me up about um, getting on the team and I was super stoked about that. So I've been rocking with him ever since. Um, so yeah, get on uh, Instagram, follow Needle Jig. Uh, and what's your, what's your YouTube channel too? That's uh, it's a Needle Jig Tattoo Supply. So needle jig that's tattoo. where that's, I mean, that's where they should be when they're seeing this video but yeah but hey man I, yeah a, a plug would have been cool you didn't need to suck up that hard <laughs> <laughs> it's always great uh, seeing you joe i can't yeah, wait to too, uh, see you again in person uh i miss you and uh man i hope things get back to normal sometime soon yeah it'd be nice to do a convention good time. Yeah. yeah all right brother well yeah. uh I just want to say thank you to all the viewers. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, be sure to follow Joe. Check him out. Support a brother during these dismal times we're all living in. And, uh, you know, if he comes into your area, make sure you get tattooed by him because uh, his stuff's sick, man. Um, if, his, if, if you're interested in his style, he does it very well. So uh, thanks again, Joe.